thank you for purchasing one of our individual Throttle Body kits. If you've ordered the complete kit, we ship them completely assembled for your convenience, and you can skip ahead to the manifold assembly installation portion of this video. Although we do advise that you watch this video in its entirety to make sure you understand why we did things a certain way, as well as how we assemble them in case you ever disassemble your kit, you will know exactly how to put it back together properly. If you follow our instructions, you won't have any binding or fuel leak issues, but if you don't pay attention, there is a potential to do something wrong. The fuel rail we supply is a nice one-piece billet aluminum rail by Palmet, and we supply genuine Bosch EV6 injectors in our kits. Our kits also feature a Camiari heat shield and a throttle cable design rather than the traditional linkage. The very first throttle body to install, which is the left-hand throttle body, will have your throttle position sensor attached to it. The underside of the throttle bodies have o-ring seals that seal against the face of the intake manifold. Make sure to get these seated completely in the o-ring grooves before install so you don't pinch them and create a vacuum leak. We don't use the traditional studs that are found on other ITV kits and triple carburetor kits and instead use through bolts with a countersink design. We did this for a couple of reasons, one being accessibility to all the fasteners when installed in frame and the other reason was cost due to these fasteners being widely available. As with many products, this is a low production volume part, and so anywhere we can save money, we pass that on to you as the client. Get all four bolts in through the intake manifold and loosely install the nylon lock nuts on the opposing side. You won't need to tighten these just yet. Leave them loose until after you install the fuel rail. The second throttle body for the middle is going to feature a linkage system on both sides with a spring-loaded set screw on the left-hand side to pair with the front throttle body. We pre-trimmed this linkage on the right-hand side of the throttle body as they come a little too long from Borla. And now onto your last throttle body, which at this point should be the obvious choice. Once you get all of your throttle bodies attached to your intake manifold, the next step is going to be getting them aligned properly with the fuel rail. You can see the fuel rail is machined with notches to locate into the throttle bodies. This will be how the whole assembly gets centered. You will need to install all six of your fuel injectors and the rail. Lubricate both O-rings on your fuel injector with some wheel bearing grease or equivalent. You can even use some WD-40 or engine oil. The Palnet fuel rail comes with some small billet aluminum locating rings. This is to allow the modern EV6 injectors to locate in the center of the injector bore and not deflect around and cause a vacuum leak. These throttle bodies were designed for use with older style EV1 injectors but EV6 injectors are much more commonplace and affordable in today's market, so we have adapted this kit to work with them. Install all six of your fuel injectors into the fuel rail. Take note on the bore offset of the fuel rail, which is to allow for injector plug clearance. You want the offset facing the injector connector side. The adapter ring drops right onto the injector, past the sealing o-ring, and sits flat against the injector body. Now locate the fuel injector and rail assembly into all six injector bores, taking care not to bind it up. Carefully seat each injector and locating ring into place until it drops into the injector bores. Once the rail is completely dropped in, you can install all of your fuel rail retention bolts and tighten them down. We advise using red Loctite on all fasteners for good measure to keep the fasteners from vibrating loose in high RPM operation. After you have tightened the fuel rail down, you can now tighten all of your throttle body fasteners. Next is the heat shield. This will really only apply to you if you bought the complete kit from us, as this will serve as a good reference point if you tear everything down and have to reassemble it. The heat shield is held on by L brackets at the front and rear throttle bodies and also serves as the throttle cable bracket. The throttle linkage attaches in between the middle and right hand throttle bodies at the linkage shown here. Once you have all throttles attached, make sure the adjoining screws are all attached. These don't have to be reefed down tight, just tight enough to contact and stay snug. If you over tighten these, they can cause a high idle condition because you've introduced tension into the throttle linkage. The air filter bases are also held in with Allen head fasteners and these fasteners require a mandatory application of red Loctite on them. The last thing you want is for one of these to rattle loose and get ingested by your engine. This is how we pre-prep them for install. We recommend purchasing this kit with our Remflex manifold gasket and our exhaust stud kit, but you can really use any gasket and hardware combination you like. We recommend doing this next step with either the old intake gasket or with no gasket for now, as you want to verify you don't have a clearance issue between the intake manifold and your exhaust manifold or header. As stated on our website, unfortunately with aftermarket castings, variances in OEM exhaust manifolds, 
and variances in aftermarket headers, we can't guarantee you won't have to clearance the intake manifold and possibly your exhaust manifold or header to get everything to line up properly. If you run into a clearance issue, in most cases you can take an aluminum rasp and an angle grinder and clearance the contact areas around the intake manifold until it clears properly and all of your fasteners line up. Yes, we know, it sucks having to clearance new parts, and in a perfect world our intake manifold would fit every single manifold or header combination out there, but we just simply can't touch every single setup on the planet for now. Once you've made sure the manifold clears everywhere, you can install your new gasket and make sure the intake manifold bolt holes are lined up. If you have the gasket in the way of these holes, it's going to make it very difficult to install the new intake manifold. Once you get your new gasket on, install the header and or exhaust manifold with the three inside bolts first. Go ahead and tighten them to spec. Next, loosely install all of the manifold bolts with the yokes in place. You're going to pivot the intake manifold into each one of these studs inside the yokes and then install the top fasteners. Take your time as this can be a little tedious to get it all lined up properly, but once they're all lined up, it will drop right in. Now moving on to the throttle cable. For the S30, we supply a bracket that mounts to where the factory linkage went. Remove the E-clip and remove your factory linkage and install our throttle cable bracket in place of it. The throttle cable bracket goes all the way down and two supplied spacers take up the slack and allow you to reinstall the factory E-clip. The factory gas pedal needs to be removed from the vehicle and the factory pivot ball drilled out and removed. Once you've completed this step, the gas pedal will have a hole that you can install the cable through bolt into. Install the through bolt, but don't tighten it all the way down just yet. Reinstall the gas pedal, and then fish the throttle cable through the firewall and feed it through the insert you just installed in the gas pedal. Pull all of the slack through and trim it down to where it will slip into the capture lug and tighten down with the Allen key. Take care not to trim too much, as you'll have to order another cable if you trim it too short. Make sure you get it good and tight so the throttle cable doesn't slip and leave you stranded. Do one final check to make sure you get full open and full close out of the throttle cable. There is some degree of adjustment here at the throttle cable bracket on the firewall. At this point you're pretty much done with the install other than going over everything one last time to make sure everything is tight or adjusted. You can now move on to tuning this new setup. We're not going to cover tuning in this video as we will be making a separate video covering our Mega Squirt kits and utilizing the Alpha N tuning strategy. As always, thanks for watching and don't forget to hit that like button, comment, and let us know what you liked about this video, which you didn't like, and hit the subscribe button.